previously. And now part two. So to start with, we'll look at the main body of the machine. Yeah. Its overall condition isn't too bad. The, um, there's obvious signs of wear and tear here and there. The, um, perhaps the worst bit is on the, the actual jaw, well where the jaws go here, I'll call it the ways. You can see where there's excessive wear here. So obviously over the years, the 60, 70 years that it's been going, all of the metal, all of the, the parts have been placed here and slid through so that that's gradually just worn it down. So the actual, the finish at parts where it, um, it's never been touched is, is still pretty good. My, um, my plan is to, is to deck the top, just drop it down so the lowest part here is, um, is now flat, with, uh, flush with the rest. I'll probably have to re-stamp the, uh, the serial number here because that may get lost. However, there are enough points for me to to get it level on the mill. The, um, the two bores where the, the, the top part hinges, um, they're not in too bad a condition. I'll bring you in for a close-up in a short while. But they're, um, they're not too bad. On this side, this is where the, uh, the main pulley goes, where the, the drive shaft comes through. This has a, a bronze bushing, which is... It has this bronze bushing. So that basically goes through there, comes out the other side, and the flywheel that drives the actual, uh, the main hacksaw part, comes off that. This is not in the, uh, the best of conditions. It does have, again I'll bring you in for a close-up, but it does have uh, oil ways cut into the actual bearing, on, into the actual bearing surface. However, just by feeling it you can tell that um, it's run dry many 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 hours and the actual the face of the um, of the bearing surface is absolutely shot so I'll probably make a new one of those I think it's, it, it's necessary so this bore here is fairly good it um, hasn't had much wear at all this is the one that takes the bronze bushing that goes all the way through to the flywheel so as you can see, it's it's not too bad. Maybe a slight honing on it, but other than that, pretty good. So I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm just trying to show the damage that's on the inside of this bronze bushing. It's difficult to show. By the way, there's a there's an awful lot of wear on this bronze bush. The bore on the other side has some wear as it doesn't use a bronze bush. It uses a steel plug that goes through and acts as a hinge. This also has a, where that little screw hole is there, there's a small bracket that comes out on the other side. And as the saw blade comes down when it reaches its end of travel, presses on a tiny little uh, switch that breaks the contact turns the motor off. So by adjusting the angle of this you can set the point at which the, uh, the motor turns off. However, as you can see, just by playing there, again I'll bring you in for a close up later, there's a lot, there's a lot of play there. So, my plan is to, if I'm making a bronze bush for this side, I might as well do one for that side as well and then make a new plug that goes inside that. It means that we have two proper bearing surfaces and will reduce the overall wear. This is about as close as I can actually get on this pin. However, I just wanted to highlight the two points here. So this is where there's a bolt that goes through that holds this pin in place and it just it's just biting straight into the um, into the actual pin. There's also, if I can just catch the light, there's also 
rem remnants of it looks like a pattern from a jaw so somebody's had this in a vice jaw so let's talk about jaws not that one these ones so the uh, the jaws on this uh, on this saw there's two parts to them there's a moving part which is this one and then there is a fixed jaw now this one this fixed jaw goes at this end and I say it's fixed however it can be moved to one of two positions you can see there's two bolting holes here and they can go into either here or here now as far as I know it's only ever been fitted in here and you can actually see where the the, the, the bare metal that was underneath where the the jaws were bolted down is fairly fairly pristine it's pretty good whereas either side it's been hammered and dented there's all sorts there's nicks all kinds of bangs in it so I'm willing to bet that those jaws have hardly ever moved in the entire in its entire life so we have one jaw fits about there or it can you can see it's actually it's fouling up on the actual body of the it looks like someone's used this as a as an anvil and it's uh, it doesn't quite line up so part of the process of flattening the the ways here should allow the this jaw to go further along okay, well, let's put it there for the time being then we have the moving jaw as I say this there's a uh, the handle goes all the way through goes into this uh, hole here and there's a thread on the inside and as you tighten the thread it pulls it pulls this jaw in such as that as well as those there's also another bolt that goes into this part here and it's the uh, other one over there and we have the two actual jaw faces as it were and this these bend around that point so you're able to set angles so you can cut specific angles again I've only ever seen this in that position so um, I'm sure someone will have used it in the past to cut an angle but not not in the uh, not in my knowledge however it will go to it looks like about 45 degrees that way cutting the other way it's a shallower angle so what am I actually going to do with these the actual moving jaw faces again they've been they've been damaged over time so history's treated them poorly so I think what I'll probably do is flatten these off so there's a nice clean face other than that there isn't much more to really do they um, the actual the bearing surface here where they move that lines up quite well so I'm not overly worried about that and once they're actually fixed in place it's not as if it's constantly moving back and forward so a light oiling and that's it so deck those both of them And these are actually in, in fairly good, fairly good condition. The um, the top side of these ways here may just need a bit of a stoning. Other than that, they're pretty good. Here's a uh, close up of the the wear on the uh, the ways for the jaws. You can see where the the old jaw, or where the you can see where the fixed jaw has been fixed and hasn't moved in an age so the actual material here is is fairly good and then this is the point that's had all of the damage that this is the point that's had all the wear all of the pieces of material that have been slot slotted through there in the last 70 years they've just worn it down so 
and again as you move further this way obviously people don't cut larger parts on machines of this size so they, they tend to be what two to three inches so everything beyond this point over here it's nice and smooth as an example to um, to get an idea of how much is actually out if we put a ruler across there and cause a shadow to try that and then if we run a torch behind it you can see there's a huge amount of wear there so the other part of the jaws not that one it's the handle and the screw thread that uh, pulls the rear jaw in. It, on the whole, it's not in too bad a condition. However, at this end, where it's um, seen the most use, as it's the it's the closest point. So anybody cutting small sized pieces of um, metal, they'd be using this end more often. The thread has been mangled and bent over you can see our gal bring you in for a close-up but it's um it's absolutely shot so there's no way that it would work it might just catch it but i wouldn't trust it to hold it tight so i'm tempted there's nothing really complicated about this i'm tempted to just make an, an entire new piece here's a close-up of the thread on the drawbar you can see it's absolutely trashed The, um, the other main point of concern is on, the, is on the other side, so let me just quickly turn it around. I have no idea when this happened, however at some point in its life, somebody was cutting something heavy, the saw cut through it, it fell and broke this part off the side. So there's a number of options I have. I can leave it as it is, however I'm not, not too happy about that one. The other option is to insert another part, cut a piece of flat bar, the approximate same shape, and then and then weld it in. Or it could be built up maybe through with layers of weld. Not too sure about that. So one thing I know that I I do want to do is is fix this primarily because I want to try and use coolant on it. There, there is a plug in here that allows drainage out and I believe one or two of the models this belongs to came with uh, coolant so I don't see any reason why I couldn't fit it to this. So th this, this whole area, th this is a trough where all of the coolant gathers and the lowest point is the drain plug. I'm, I'm fairly determined to um, to get this fixed. It may not be the prettiest fix in the world, but as long as it, it basically as long as it holds the coolant in, I'm not uh, I'm not too fussed. The other thing I may do is make a a support that goes in here. So if you put heavy bars on, for example, um, they're not suspended in midair at this point here. Because they, they come through the actual saw cuts approximately an inch and a half away from this edge. So the actual piece that's being cut off, once it cuts through, it it has nothing to support it. There's there's no there's nothing hanging over this side. Now obviously if you look at the modern modern saws, they have supports on either side and the blade goes down a thin gap. So what I'm thinking is put supports out on this side and possibly even some outriggers that can be either hinged into place or um, folded up from underneath. So if I'm cutting something heavy and substantial, it's supported on both sides of the cutting blade. Here's a close-up of, uh, of the brake on the other side. So you, you can see, I mean, judging by how smooth this is, it must have happened a very long time ago. There's no sharp edges at all on this, so the amount of wear and tear that this has had, it must it must have happened decades ago for it to be this smooth. So let's talk about pulleys. This is the the main pulley that came off the off the saw. 
and if you are familiar with the previous video where I showed the play you could see that this pulley had a severe wobble and it was actually held together someone at some point in time had very crudely cut this piece of it looks like three mil steel it's very badly cut but it was cut to fit over the pulley there and there's a series of holes that um, sort of hold it together um, he, I, obviously it worked but it's uh, yeah not very good and you can actually see again I'll, I'll bring you in for a close-up but you can see that there are three cracks that go right across here so on one side it's not too bad and on the other it's completely cracked through and that's that causes it to run out by a hell of a lot I actually spent some time and measured how much it was actually out so here are the cracks actually this part has two two cracks there's one there and there's actually one there it might have been repaired at some point in in its life um, I also don't know if this is the original pulley that was on the machine. It's a 12 inch Picador made in England. However, there's no indication of manufacturing date, so I can only assume that it was from the same period. However, where we have the, the cracks at the, the exact opposite point to that, that's my starting point, so that was zero and then as you start moving out both ways as you start moving out we go up 10 thou, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and it goes all the way around and it reaches this point which is exactly opposite at 170 thou um, which isn't good for a pulley and again it just goes down it, it, it's fairly equal all the way around as, as it goes up so you can see that this end here is dropping away it's being pulled down that way so over here at the let's call it the 12 o'clock position at the top here that's where we are even and then around the bottom here this is the point at which it reaches 170 thou out and these are the cracks here you can just make out so there's there's one straight across there there's one all the way through there and there's actually two on this one there's a smaller fracture just through there and then one across there as well. So that steel plate that was used was was obviously added in a hope to try and pull it and brace it together. So the options for this are try and repair it. However, looking at it, it looks like someone's already tried to repair it several times. The um, the edge here, where the the bore goes in, where the drive shaft. It looks like it's been welded a number of times. However, that just could be part of the manufacturing process. I'm unsure. The parts here where it's cracked, it, it's obviously under a lot of stress. Now, maybe it was a manufacturing problem for this particular pulley, or maybe something fell on it, or you know was caught in in the works. So, I'm not. I don't really trust it. It might be an interesting project just to see if I can actually do it purely as a experimentation for some welding but um, as to actually this going back on the machine probably not I will um, I'll probably replace it here is the um, drive shaft that goes from the pulley through to the flywheel so you can see this is the pulley side and there's a uh, keyway cut in it and then this is the part that goes through the bronze bush there's a slight taper where it goes into the flywheel and then there's a nut on the end that pulls the flywheel on secures it this has excessive wear the gaps on the pulley it was it was just completely wobbly the you can see where there's actually wear from the bronze bush 
and on this side where the taper is it looks like it's been welded so maybe the maybe the taper in the past is completely gone it, it's it's absolutely atrocious so there's this huge pit marks there's holes in it it looks like this point here is also where possibly a pin went in at one point although I'm not too sure I think maybe it's just a hole that's developed so this whole piece will be replaced next time Thanks for watching.